right. So, welcome. The purpose of today's uh, professional development is I have read The Mentor Leader by Tony Dungy, and I would like to share with you guys some of the lessons that I have learned in this book. Now, Tony Dungy and I are, are pretty different characters. Uh, one, I have not led any championship football teams ever, but I'm also not a big sports guy, so it's kind of strange that I would be talking about this book. Uh, a lot of people see my size and they assume I played football, but I was actually a, a track runner, which is the most uncoordinated of all sports. Um, and I think that this book could have been a lot more powerful had I had that background. He was talking a lot about what was going on in the football in the 80s and you know, Mean Joe Green. The only experience I have with Mean Joe Green is that Pepsi or Coke commercial where he throws his jersey. And I think that the, a lot of the stories he shared in here could have been more powerful if I would have known those people. But um, if you are into sports and into leadership, I would highly recommend this book. He's also a very religious person. Uh, while I'm not atheist or I just, I'm not a very religious person, I don't find it that interesting. But he does share a lot of Bible stories and, and, and uses Jesus as a model. So if you are also into that, I would highly recommend this book. My wife got me this book when I got the mentor position here at Indy Met. I think she got it just because it had the word mentor in the title, but even though you know he and I don't mesh, I, I very much responded to this book uh, and, and the messages behind it. So, Mantle of Leadership. This book is full of great quotes. And I think this quote sums it up very well. Tony Dungy talks a lot about, it's not just about winning. It's about building a team that has these intangible parts that are bigger than numbers. It's not about your win-loss record, it's about your team. So he talks in the beginning about how leadership can be taught and absorbed. If you think about the family we have a lot at Indian Met, um, like I've learned a lot from Chad and Adam and Dr. Forner and what they've picked up just by doing it. They've never set me down and taught me how to lead, but the culture that is here at that school I have picked up, I have absorbed it, and I am trying to be like them. And, and that's how this is passed on. It doesn't have to necessarily be formalized, but it is a mindset. He also talks throughout the book about a leadership tree. If you start and you have a strong leadership style, the people around you will have a strong leadership style too. That will reach out and when they become leaders, it branches out. So your style and the impact that you make can pass through generations. And not just generations from generation to like children, but from school to school to school. You know, Bishop was a big mentor for me, and now he's at a different school. He's going to be mentoring others. If you think about you know, Chad and Mr. Pat, they mentored Bishop. Now Bishop is going to go mentor other people. Their, Chad's reach has now extended exponentially. But to be a good mentor, it has to be an everyday thing. And you have to get your hands dirty. You cannot be a mentor from afar. So what is mentor leadership? I really like this picture. I think it summarizes it very good. If we are going to have a good mentorship in this school, we all have to pretend we're mother ducks. And everyone else is our duck. And it's going to create this environment, well, if we're all caring for each other, and we're all taking care of each other, and we're holding ourselves accountable for everyone's um, success in every day, then we're all going to grow as a group. And this is intentional. It's not a personality thing that is somehow innate. If, if you are doing this, you are thinking about your practice, and you are trying to be more encouraging and equipping and educating others, I mean, you're doing it intentionally. And again, our success should not be about the ECA scores, even though they were, we were very happy with them. We talk a lot about if 
our ECA scores increase, and we see a huge jump in ECA scores. That's awesome. But if we have to sacrifice our values to do that, meaning we have to cut off character, we are not treating each other well, we're not coming to school recharged, what is the cost of that? And think about what our students see. If we're doing to meet our goals anything and everything that breaks our values, we are passing on negative attributes to our children. Now clearly ECA results are very important, but I think the building an equality team will lead to longer lasting success. Benefits. Benefits of mentor leadership is all about long lasting. This is playing the long game. It's a service based model. So it is very self reflective. We all have strengths and weaknesses and we should build each other up to complement. And thinking about this, it, this is harder to think about in a school because how everyone contributes is much more apparent from you know, special ed teachers to teachers. We're all the front of the organization. But this applies to all organizations, from the secretaries to the executives to the number crunchers behind. Everyone has to step up. There's a great story, uh, and this is one of the few stories he actually gives that I remember. In the Super Bowl in what, 2007? Because that was six. Uh, defensive linebacker Nick Harper, uh, who had mentored a junior, got injured and had to sit that game out. Well, defensive back Kelvin Hayden got the game winning interception to win the game against the Bears. That was possible, and the coaches and Nick Harper, who had been injured, was confident, who, gross, um, was confident in their abilities because of the strong mentorship that had taken place. Nick Harper, the veteran, didn't fear the new young guy. He took him under his wing and taught him everything he knew. He tried to make this player the best he could be because someday he might get injured and they will rely on him. So there are obviously struggles with this. Just like I said, it's service-based. Is a positive, service based can also be a negative. This is the harder option. It's harder to help everyone. He talks a lot about draft versus free agency. Um, me not being a sports guy, I actually do get this metaphor though. A lot of coaches and team owners, they say, I want to win the Super Bowl this year. We're going to clean house with all the old guys. We're gonna bring in new fresh blood, we're gonna spend a lot of money on a lot of talent, and this is gonna be our year. Well, quarterback gets injured, you spent $15 million on him, your bank account and futures drain, no Super Bowl this year. We've also sacrificed the coming years because you don't have any money. Your contracts are locked in. So he makes the argument that what you should do is use the draft get young talent who's healthy, they might not have all the attributes of a successful football team. But if you pull them together and you train them and you build a solid team that works well, you get a long-term benefit. Now this does require faith. You have to understand that this takes time. One of the questions that I wanted to prompt your thinking with is are you willing to sacrifice success now for sustained success later? And I think that intuitively we're all like, yeah, we want to do that. But it's hard not to win now. It's hard not to only have incremental gains. Because we were putting forth all this effort. You may also not get the credit or see the full impact. Because this is you're building a team around yourself. Most of the book is all about why it's important and how our society can benefit. But I want to talk about what, man, uh, what mentor leaders actually have. They have character. This is when your words and your values mesh up. He talks a lot in the book about how people are tribal. We want to be led. 
But what distinguishes someone that is a natural leader versus not a natural leader is character. And when your values and your words and your actions, they are all one thing. We all might say something. We all value diversity and inclusion. But do our actions really match, match that? I think it's easy to say these things on paper. And those are the people that rise in a crisis. People in a crisis will naturally follow those with character. And during a crisis is not a good time to start being a good leader. Trustworthiness. You're going to be there when you say you are. Courageous. We talked about leading and gathering a team around you. You have to get your hands dirty. Exercise faith. This is not just a religious faith, but having the vision and calling it into action, and but also understanding that this, our plan will take time. And I'm going to stick with this plan because I have the faith that it is the right plan. And it may take three or four years to see the fruits of this labor, but it will get us there. Open to suggestions and change. And this is all, this mentor leadership is all about serving others. So if you are blaming others, this is not for you. You hold yourself accountable, you honor everyone else, and you lift their lives up. So talks about the um, organizational chart. I lost the word. Usually you see the leader at the top, people that are accountable to the leader in the middle, and employees at the bottom. But mentor leadership is all about raising and lifting all people so that everyone gets lifted up. And this might seem unstable, but it's actually a little more nimble. Since you are loyal, your loyalty should spread upward. You can change and adapt faster. The seven E's of a mentor leader. What, does, what do mentors actually do? They serve their people. As mentors, if we are mentoring each other, we should serve each other. Adam does this really, really, really well. How does he do it? At the end of every conversation, he asks, what? Do you have any questions, and what can I do for you? And, and that puts you in this position. One, it tells you that the conversation's over, because that's how Adam ends conversations. He doesn't say bye. He says, how can I help you? But it sets him up to serve you. Education and equip. You must give the people the tools to succeed. Encouragement. This is one of the things that I found most helpful. He talks a lot in the book about encouragement is most important when things are going well. It's easy to encourage someone when they're down. And I'm struggling with so and so student. I'm really, you know, having to, yes, it's easy to give them a hug and encourage them. But when things are going really well, it's also important to support them, to tell them that they are doing well, to show them that you are helping. Empower them. You cannot micromanage them forever. Once they are ready, you must set them loose to be other, to be the teachers they were meant to be. Uh, you have to inspire and motivate, and you have to lift them up. Again, you may not get the credit for the success of the team. A good mentor leader is often in the shadows, pushing outward. So, when you're doing this, you need to be looking for opportunities to make a difference. They're unexpected. So think about the mentors who have been influential in your life. Were they your boss? Maybe not. I think, I've been thinking a lot about this, who's been really important in my life. A lot of my teammates from my old high school running days were mentors. So your platform, the size of it doesn't matter. Again, your words, your actions, and your vision must mesh. That is the key to leadership. Again, I'm not very religious, but this, um, really spoke to me. Preach the gospel at all times. When necessary, use words. What that tells me is 
to preach the gospel, you have to live the gospel. Then occasionally you might have to say something. If you're being a good Catholic, you're following the Catholic doctrines and doing Christ-like things. You're not telling other people what is and is not good unless you need to. Um, this is a slightly off topic. Um, I, at Christmas this year, I was really, really surprised. I walk into church, and who is sitting there? Like, in the lobby, five feet from me, is Mike Pence. And I, I freeze, and I, like, walk backwards. And, like, that's Mike Pence. And, and so clearly the pastor knew he was coming because he gave this beautiful sermon about redemption and doing the right thing because other people need mercy. Well, what was happening right around Christmas? What had Mike Pence just done that did not show mercy? He denied all those refugees entrance to our state. He didn't directly come out and look at him, but everyone in the church knew exactly what he was talking about. And it was really funny because I, I, I accidentally sat close to him. Uh, my dad, who is spacey like me, had no clue what was going on, but all eyes were trained. And I think that that speaks to this. If you're going to say that you are a virtuous person, you need to live those actions. Your words do not uh, mean anything if your actions don't. So the meat of this, how does this apply? What, if we did this and we came together as a group and we want to do this, what would this look like? What action steps should we take right now to do this? First, as I've said, we are a family here. We are very, very close. And we need to capitalize on that to help each other get better. We need to create a formal mentorship for all onboarding, whether they're um, like Ms. Jackson who has experience or they're like Ms. White who doesn't. There's things that we do here and there's ways that we do things that all people need to be taught. Dr. Forner talks a lot about the broken windows policy of policing. That's we're going to go after everything. We're going to go after dress code. We're going to go after language. We're going to go after sagging pants. And that has alleviated some of the bigger things like fights and big things. But we need to apply that to help each other. If I see someone in need, that's my job to help them. Because I'm the mother duck, just like you're the mother duck to me. I think it's much easier. But the biggest thing that's helped me as a teacher is going into other classrooms and grading them. I, I, I'm the mentor teacher. I have to give you guys feedback. Well, if I give you a two because you did something that wasn't the best you could have done, I better be doing that to the best of my ability. And that has, I have truly become a mentor that way. I would like to see other people doing that. I would like to see some of the professional development time that we have built into the schedule as volunteering in the community. I think showing the the community, our true faith, and serving them will bring students here. If they can see 15 staff members serving food at the local food pantry, the homeless shelter, washing dishes, I think that will do way more for our school's well-being than any half-hour session on um, Do Nows can do. Replace some of the professional development time with more formalized mentor. We should have times to meet with each other and help us. Go and observe each other like we've done before. Help each other develop curriculum. We all have strengths and we all have weaknesses. We need to start matching up teachers that are really good in really good areas with teachers who struggle with that. Machina is really, really good with building relationships with students. I am not. Help me. If that needs to be formalized because I've got a baby at home. I can't stay until 5.30 to have that conversation with you. I'm sorry. Administration should take a larger role in the classroom. 
I would love to have Dr. Forder come in and sub for me on one day so that I can go out into the classroom and help mentor other people. Go into your guys' classroom and observe you. But I can't do that because we're locked in. It's not, teaching is not like any other business. If you lock your keys at home, you can't leave because you have a classroom. You, you can't leave and step away from your desk. So, that concludes my um, presentation. There's some reflection questions for you to think about. Uh, again, I really uh, appreciate you guys coming. Hopefully you found this beneficial. I know we went a little longer than I said. Uh, thank you very much.